Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, I was at the grocery store, apples were on sale, big bags of apples, uh, not, not necessarily on sale, they were on the cart at the back of the produce section, that, that, you know, that cart of forlorn vegetables and fruits that, you know, look like if you don't take them home right now, they're not gonna last another day. So there were bags of apples back there, really good price. I thought, what am I gonna do with the apples? Uh, let's make an apple cake. We're gonna start out by browning this butter. We'll get it into a pot and get that melted. And there are some burnt butter recipes. I'm just gonna brown my butter. Um, in some instances, taking it too far and getting that really bitter flavor works in some dishes. I often don't like it. So I'm just gonna take it to the browning point. I've got it on quite high to begin with, just to get it to melt completely. And I pre-cut the butter. Might not have looked like it going in, but I cut it up just so that it melts quicker, just so I can break it up and get it melted quicker. And you hear that noise, right? It's pretty noisy. It's bubbling and it's spitting. That's all of the water that's in the butter being driven off. Um, a couple of ways to know that your brown butter is browned enough is obviously you look at it, it's turned brown. But just before it reaches that point of turning brown, it gets quiet. You've driven off most of the water. And once you've driven off that water, you can actually bring the temperature of the oil up beyond the boiling point. And beyond the boiling point is where the butter starts to brown. So it's an audible thing. It's gone quiet, I should check on it. It's a visual thing, it's brown. And it's also a, a smelling thing. It smells nutty. So you've got three things that you're looking for when you're browning butter. And the fourth thing is um, getting it off the heat quickly so that it doesn't over brown and get to the point where it burns. This is one of those things where you should watch it closely. Definitely. Um, one of those places where I would suggest not using a super heavy bottom pot. You know how they always tell you, use a heavy bottom pot. And you know that person that, it doesn't matter what question you ask them, who won the 1967 uh, Stanley Cup, their answer is cast iron, cast iron, cast iron is not the answer here. It's gone completely quiet. And underneath it's brown, underneath the foam, I don't know if you can see that on camera, it's brown, it's time to pull it off. And in an effort to stop it from browning too much, I'm gonna pour it off. Uh, be careful. Definitely be careful. You're pouring something hot into something that's cool. You could crack the glass. Make sure that it's, uh, that it's a good glass container. There we go. That essentially stops the cooking. If you left it in the pot and you've got a heavy bottom pot, it would continue cooking and you don't want that to happen. So there we go. There's the brown butter. Now we move on to the rest of the cake. And we need three eggs in the whisk in the mixer, and I've got the whisk attachment on the mixer. So we'll whip those up. While that's whipping up, I've got flour in this bowl, and to that I'm going to add baking powder and baking soda, cinnamon, cloves, salt, and nutmeg. And these are all warming spices. If you've got a container of pumpkin pie spice in your cupboard, this would be a perfect place to use it. Okay, now, I will give that a stir. The eggs have whipped up nicely, so into this I'm going to add white sugar and brown sugar. And we'll whip that back together. Okay, that's looking good. We've got the butter ready to go. We've got the flour ready to go. Uh, I'm now going to peel and cut up these apples. These are Royal Gala. Um, they might be Gala, who knows? Can't remember whether they're Gala or Royal Gala. Anyway, I am not the kind of person who is going to scream at you that there's only one apple to use. I'm very much the kind of person who uses the apple that's in front of them. And this is what was on sale, so that's what I'm gonna use. I know that there are apples today in 2024 and for the last probably 50 years that are considered better for cooking than others and some that are considered better for eating than others. Um, I just, I just don't care. I really don't care. I'm very much the kind of person who just uses what's available. What do I have in front of me? What can I afford? 
Um, do I like the taste of the apple? In this case, I do. And I also know that this apple is going to cook out in the cake. I'm going to cut some up and I'm going to shred some up. So the shredded one is going to bake in completely into the cake. And the cut up ones will leave a little bit of chunkiness. I guess what I'm trying to say is just use the apple that you have. Okay, the apples are pretty much ready to go. We can turn the mixer back on and we'll pour in the brown butter. And I wanna get that brown sludge from the bottom. Definitely wanna get that brown sludge from the bottom. That smells amazing. Absolutely smells amazing. Okay, I've got a lemon here and I wanna zest the lemon in. Um, I find that the lemon, that just that brightness of, its, of acidity adds a lot to the cake. Okay, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it down in the bowl just to make it a little bit easier to grate the lemon in. If you had a bottle of lemon extract in your spice cabinet and you didn't want to go and buy a lemon just to zest it in, uh, half a teaspoon of lemon extract would kind of get you to exactly the same spot. Uh, that's a great substitution. Put this back on, whip it in. And this is where I start to spoon in the flour. Batter's looking great. So in go the apples. These are just roughly chopped, two roughly chopped apples. Apples are really difficult. I know that I could weigh them and give you the exact weight of how many apples I used. I used three small to medium sized apples. You could go four or five. If you really like apples, you could go a few more. And so two of them I chopped up and one I'm going to grate in. Just watch when you get close to the core. Okay, so I've got a round cake tin. Uh, I've greased the inside, buttered the inside, and I put a parchment paper in the bottom just so it's easier to get out. Okay, the oven is preheated to 325. I'll set a timer for about 30 minutes, come back and check it and see how much longer it needs. Hey, that looks pretty good, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. What do we apple got there? Cake. Well, an apple cake. Ah, well, there you go. In its most basic form, an apple cake. So you could put a streusel top on this before you bake it. You know, brown yeah. sugar, flour, and butter mixed together, crumbled up and put on top. You could put nuts in with the apples. What a nice apple cake. Yeah. Oh, nice apple cake. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I, what I like about it is that it's not, it's more apple than spice. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So the, the spice is there, but it's not overpoweringly spice. Yep. Mm hmm. The lemon zest helps with that. Mm. Yes. So we have learned that lemon zest and yeah. apples are, are, um, like in that mock apple pie yeah, thing, yeah, and they, it's the lemon zest that really convinces you you're eating an apple. Yeah. Is that acidic? acidic, acidic? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you could streusel top, you could put nuts in it if you wanted, like walnuts or... Mm -hmm. I don't really like walnuts. Heck, but you could even put dates in it. Probably put dates in it. You could put an icing on it. Personally, I don't think an icing works with this. I think the streusel top works best. But that's a solid cake. It really is a solid cake. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.